Bonjour tout le monde, bienvenue, bienvenue à tout le monde, welcome. Uh, I'm Catherine Loubier, Quebec's Delegate General in New York. Thank you for joining us for a very special program today on professional hockey. Uh, let me first introduce our two very special guests today that I thank, NHL legends Guy Lafleur and Stéphane Matteau. Uh, let, me, let me start by Guy, uh, so known as uh, Le Démon Blanc or simply Flower. Uh, Guy Lafleur was the most gifted player of his time and most gifted offensive player with the Montreal Canadiens. Leading the team in terms of regular season attendance and regular scored points, he is from Thurso in the West Quebec, a place I know well, and has two sons. In 76-77, he set the Montreal Canadiens record with the most points in a single regular season, and the next year he tied that record. He is also someone who marked my young years, mainly because my mom was a complete fan of flower power, as she called him. Uh, and I don't think I've ever seen a com uh, my mom so passionate about a single human being, except my dad, of course. So uh, Guy Lafleur's passion uh, goes way back. Uh, at age 10, he took part in his very first Quebec City International Pee Wee Hockey Tournament, ended up allowing his team to win the C Championship title in each of the three seasons. At age 15, Guy moved to Quebec City and he played for the Aces for the season, uh, for three seasons and two seasons as they became the Quebec Rampart in the Quebec Major Junior League. In his first season uh, with the Rampart, he set the record for most goals scored, 103, during a regular season in a Major Junior Hockey League in Canada. The following season, he broke his own record and ended his second season by winning the first Memorial Cup in their history. The Montreal Canadiens took note and he was their first, cho first choice in the NHL amateur draft. And between 76 and 1980, Guy scored at least 50 goals and 125 points per season. He also led the Montreal Canadiens to four consecutive Stanley Cup wins. In 84, he retired from the NHL and I'm not going to go into why, but let's say Guy knows politics more than we do, maybe. And in 1985, the Canadians retired his jersey, number 10. Um, and um, uh, that's in 1988, sorry. And he was inducted into the Hall of Fame of Hockey. However, shortly after the induction, Lafayette decided to interrupt his retirement and return to the game with the New York Rangers. He played three more seasons one with the New York Rangers, and I believe his wife, Lise, discovered the city and very much enjoyed it. And, and then two seasons with the Quebec Nordiques. That's pretty incredible. In 85, the Guy Lafleur Award of Excellence and the Guy Lafleur Award of Merit were established. They, they reward hockey players who best combine excellence in hockey performance and academic achievement. And finally, Guy was awarded many honors in his career, including the Art Frost Trophy three times, the Hart Trophy, Trophy twice, the Lester B. Pearson Award three times, the Conn Smythe Trophy, the Lou Marsh Trophy, the Lionel Conacher Award. He's a member of the Order of Canada, a member de l'Ordre national du Québec, and he has been inducted, as I said, to the Hockey Hall of Fame, but also Canada Sports Hall of Fame. So welcome, Guy Lafleur. Thank you for being here. My pleasure. Uh, let me turn to Stéphane Matteau now. So Stéphane is from another region I know well, Rouen Aranda, region of the northwest of Quebec. He played more than 800 regular season games in the NHL. His professional career took off in 87 when he was drafted in the second round by the Calgary Flames, where he played from 19 to 1991. He also played for the Chicago Blackhawks from 91 to 94 the New York Rangers from 94 to 95, the St. Louis Blues, 95-97, the San Jose Sharks from 97 to 2002, and finally, the Florida Panthers from 2002 to 2003. Therefore, I think we can conclude that Quebec significantly contributed to these American hockey teams with Stéphane on board. He is also known, of course, for his very famous Game 7 goal against the Devils. I was watching it last night again. The goal that ended the series and allowed the New York Rangers to win the Stanley Cup. 
Wow, what a, what a play. And that became a defining moment in the Rangers history. And that also gave Stefan a permanent place in New York sports history. He retired from the NHL to return to Quebec and serve as assistant coach to the Blainville Boisbriand Armada in the Quebec Junior Major League um, for two seasons, from 2011 to 2013. He's also part of a venerated Rangers alumni group, and uh, he gives hockey clinics to kids in the New York area. He also helped create a leadership program for Bronx elementary and middle school students. And on his torso is a tattoo with the words. Believe in yourself, you are braver than you think, more talented than you know, and capable of more than you imagine. That I find very inspiring, because in all our positions, we often underestimate the power we have. So I like that tattoo, Stefan. Thank you both for being here today. We're honored to have you. I have to say, I was a bit terrified to make a mistake in facts or factual mistakes about your amazing careers, and I hope I didn't. Um, uh, I have to say also, as all the 80 for 80 years that are watching today, I'm sure, hockey was part of our family. It was something connecting us to the state, as we said. Uh, it was something defining, so important to see Quebecers be the best out there, compete with the Americans and the Russians. In fact, some things don't change. Quebec players also commentating sometimes in broken English on U.S. television. I mean, it called for such respect, you know, raw talent, hard work. You know, it was what they were taking across the board and courage. And so play, hockey players and, and sports is an example of perseverance uh, for us all, I think. So Guy Lafleur and Stéphane Mato, thank you. Uh, for what you did. And today you're still role models, particularly in your dealings with the U.S., because you, you've been the best ambassadors Quebec uh, can have. Um, and uh, other ambassadors are, are 80 for 80 years uh, members. Uh, part of this great network, our advisory committee, who are listening today, and some of our partners on the line. I know that companies from Quebec, including Bombardier, for example, and people evolving in the uh, administration like uh, Montrealer Eric Gertler uh, has uh, uh, registered for the um, seminar this morning. Um, some of you could not make it and uh, of course the video will, we will be able to watch it afterwards. And I just want to talk about uh, at 180, his name is Eric Miller, he's in the DC area, he's part of our advisory committee. Eric wrote to me this morning, he said, Mr. Lafleur was my favorite player growing up. I think we're the same age. And I can hear my eight-year-old um, uh, self mourning the missed chance to speak to one of my idols this morning. He had to take care of his son. And he said he would have tried to get an autograph and virtually he was a big collector. And then he, he went on and wrote to me, both Monsieur Lafleur and Monsieur Matou are great examples of how sports can bring together our North American family and demonstrate the tremendous leadership place that Quebec has. And he says, I wish I could thank them personally for this. Well, Eric, you just did. And you can tell your son, mission accomplished. So today the agenda will be simple. We'll watch a short motion video to put us in a mood on the partnership we have with the US. Um, and we'll then jump right into the conversation with, with Guy and Stéphane so we can learn more about their careers, experience as Quebecer hockey players uh, with and in the U.S. And then we'll make sure to keep 15-20 uh, minutes for questions at the end. So please prepare your questions. You can activate the comment button uh, on the screen and send your questions uh, right now and as we go throughout the conversation. Just a reminder to finish that 80 for 80 years was launched to create a network of established leaders who share a strong link to Quebec and are active in the US, but also to give back to Quebec. And each of the 80s has been nominated officially. And it was a pleasure to interact uh, uh, in our last webinar with the minister, uh, Yanzin Giraud. It was a great webinar. And today for the purpose of this webinar, I would say we're all 80s. Uh, it's maybe a US citizen who graduated from uh, Quebec University, 
you may have a link because you're doing business here, uh, but we're all part of the same team this morning, and I thank you for participating. So um, I will ask you now that we watch the video to put us uh, into the right uh, state of mind. Thank you, and uh, thank you, Valérie, uh, in the office for taking care of this wonderful project and put it, putting this together. Uh, so back to our players. Uh, so Guy, Stéphane, thank you again on, on behalf of the government of Quebec uh, for participating to this webinar. So you've been both, uh, you, you've both played on different NHL teams, on American ice, in Canada with American hockey players, in US teams, uh, I'd like to hear your experience as young French-speaking, English-speaking, uh, sometimes Quebecers in the U.S. What was it like to land in the U.S., land in New York, and those U.S. cities for the first time, you know, to see the teams, the players play on ice uh, in the U.S.? What were your first impressions? Um, maybe I start with, with you, Guy, uh, as you played for the Rangers. Uh, Tell us about your experience, uh, you know, as a player, but also your family in, in New York in the Big Apple. Well, first of all, they, uh, when I first decided to go to uh, New York with the Rangers, uh, my wife was really scared about the city. <laughs> <laughs> she said it was uh, a big city and at the beginning she didn't want to come. She said, you go ahead, it's, uh, you start a couple of months and I'll see if I, I'm going to join you. So. Uh, in November, she decided to, to come. To oh, come. so it, it took a little bit of time. She yeah. Didn't come right away. Okay. Yeah. In November, she decided to come with the, the, the two children, and uh, we rented a house in Rye, uh, Rye, New York. And it was a, a beautiful place, Rye, because we practiced there uh, every, every day in Playland, at Playland. And uh, we just went to the, the, the city to play the games. So uh, she really liked it, and uh, all the weekends, every weekends that we had a chance and we didn't play hockey, we used to go and watch some plays on Broadway's because we had the tickets to, to the Rangers. And uh, the city was unbelievable, unbelievable. We, we loved it, and uh, when, uh, at the end, when my contract was over, uh, well, everybody got fired. Phyllis Pusiro got fired. Michel Bergeron <laughs> got fired. So the president of the team came to me, said, well, he said, uh, we, we don't know what to do. Uh, we, we know we, we, you have an option here, but we don't know who's going to be in place. Uh, would, would the guy in place would want you to play, still play for the Rangers? And uh, if, if you want to just try to... Uh, deal with uh, any team because right now it, it's uncertain that you, you, you're going to be back here next year. 
So I decided to negotiate with Quebec, but my wife didn't want to leave New York. <laughs> <laughs> she loved it. <laughs> she loved it by then, yeah. I mean, uh, it can be scary in the beginning when you say, I'm going to live in New York. But yeah. uh, you learn to, uh, know, you learn to enjoy it. And you, you were talking about Broadway. Today, it's very difficult for Broadway artists because, you know, with the social distancing, it's not the same New York as uh, the energy that it had in those years. Yeah, but even even when I when I played when I started with the Montreal Canadian when we played in New York, we we, we everybody was saying uh, on our team, you know, uh, I don't know how these guys are are doing it in New York because it's so big and uh, so expensive, you know, <laughs> and I'm sure it's still expensive in New York. But, but uh, for us, we we had a tough time to understand. But when you have an opportunity of playing in New York for the Rangers, that's where you understand really what's going on there and uh, how, mm -hmm. uh, how uh, appreciative uh, you are to the, to, to the fans, you know, they, they just love their, their players, they love their teams. It doesn't matter where you're from, if you're winning, no, they just... Yeah, yeah. You're right, and uh, that's why uh, I really liked it there, I loved it. And how was it with the, you know, the other players, you know, did you... Did you feel like uh, you know a Quebecer in a, in a in a sea of U.S. players, or did you feel comfortable when you started with the Rangers? Because I knew a lot of guys there. I mean, you had a lot of experience too. Marcel, you had a whole career. Marcel Dion was playing for the Rangers at the time. Chris Nyland used to play for the Montreal Canadiens. You have uh, Gresner and uh, you have uh, all the other guys. You know, they really welcomed me. They helped me out because I. I didn't know where to go or drive from right to New York. I didn't have any experience. It's something to drive in New York when you're not used to it. The and with no GPS at the time and all these devices. Huh? <laughs> but uh, no, it was just fantastic. The, 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 the players that really got together and they, they help you out a lot. Yeah. Well, let me, let me switch to, to Stefan uh, for a moment. So, Stefan, of course, we want to hear about the winning goal. <laughs> but because, uh, I mean, you became a superstar in New York. You still, still are uh, because of that goal. Um, how was it for you when, when, you, when you got to, uh, to New York and you, when you started evolving with the, with the club? Well, first of all, good morning. Thanks for having me. I love listening to Mr. Lafer's story, just I could listen to him forever. He was my <laughs> idol growing up and now I'm on the same uh, program than him, so uh, it's an honor for me to be here. But they, uh, uh, growing up northern of Quebec, uh, very small town, when I first started to play in the NHL, I was with the Calgary Flames. Our first trip to New York was very scary. We uh, walked to, uh, on 42nd Street, on Broadway, and uh, it was amazing. And then when you play against the Rangers, the, the fans, they let you know that you are in their building. It was dark and they were not rude, but they were hard uh, core fans. And they, uh, but when I got traded to the, to the Rangers, it was the championship season in 1994. We had the best team in the NHL at the time. And uh, our leader, Mark Messier, led the team. Uh, Mike Keenan, we hear all kinds of stories with Mike Keenan, but Mark Messier, Kevin Lowe's, Adam mm -hmm. Graves, at uh, my, Mike wow. Ricker, uh, uh, Brian Leach. We had such a good team, and it was easy for us to play at Madison Square Garden, but we were under pressure to win the Stanley Cup. And um, we went on and winning, uh, we finished first overall, and we played the Islanders in the first round, we beat them in four, and then we played the uh, Washington Capitals, we beat them in five, and then the real series started for us the two best teams in the NHL, us and the New Jersey Devils, uh, played against each other in the third round, and uh, we had three, two, uh, we had three games and uh, ended in double overtime, which Stefan Riche scored the first game, scored the first winning goal for the Devils. Then I scored in game three in New Jersey, my first big goal in my career, and I would have been content with that goal. I was very happy, <laughs> obviously, and. Um, a lot of things happen in life, and uh, I don't know why I was the chosen one, but in Game 7, we were going to the Stanley Cup Finals with 10 seconds left in the game, and uh, scored with uh, from the Devils scored with 7 seconds left in the game, 
Uh, otherwise, I would probably would not be here today if it didn't <laughs> that moment. So a lot of things happen in life, and uh, I took that opportunity. Um, I got lucky, maybe, but uh, it's been 26 years, and I uh, am very grateful for that moment because they they. Uh, what I like about my story, they give me a, an opportunity to succeed, even though I was an underdog player, a person person that didn't have the stats of Mr. Lafleur. But as a team, it doesn't matter where you are. If you need players like myself to be on the role models and to accept their role. So I kind of, uh, I cherish my role and I, I contribute, contribute to the success of the New York Rangers. 26 years later, today people talk about that moment even bigger. I don't like the uh, being a superstar uh, words, but it's something that I had to live with every time because I work in New York quite a bit. I go back all the time and one of yeah, them- Yeah, you do great things in New York, yes. Well, there's a lot of good things that I built that I had to go forward and I I had to over overcome a lot of fears in my, uh, that's why I have that tattoo. Like I need to push myself even more to, uh, but um, I'm very grateful to uh, to help the New York Rangers win the Stanley Cup in 94. And I, it doesn't get old because every time I, to people remind me that moment, I said, well, I had other great moments in my career, but they keep reminding me for that game. They, they will do They will do that, I guess, for the rest of your life. Right? Forever, forever. Now it's not only the, uh, I met a lot of people who were, who were at the game that night, but 26 year, years later, I meet the grandkids now. And we're getting wow. old, life's happening very fast, but I get the chance to meet their grandkids now. And the way they present, um, the way I get presented by them, to them is uh, this is the guy who <laughs> helped the New York Rangers winning the Stanley Cup. It's very rewarding and sometimes it's over, I get overwhelmed, but it's something that I'm so proud and I, uh, I cherish that with the fans and I, uh, it's a love affair that I think it's gonna go forever. Yeah, and we talked earlier about you, you guys being a role model. Um, you know that, you felt that I'm sure throughout your career. Um, it's so important from generation to generation. And that's, that's uh, a bit what we're trying to do as a government is to be here in New York. We're here since 1940, Rockefeller Center. And we, we, we need to nourish these relationships. That, that's exactly what you were talking about. And I like when you said, you know, um, they gave me a chance. They gave me a chance to come here and succeed because, you know, we often say if you can make it in New York, you can make it anywhere, right? So you, if you're thrown on the ice and you're a young player um, and you do something like that, then you, you'll be in the heart of, of New Yorkers uh, for the rest of your life. Um, can you tell us a, a little bit, Stefan, about uh, the work that you do, that you did uh, in New York, in the school uh, system with youth? Can you tell us a word on how you also contributed to New York? Uh, I started 12 years ago in Pennsylvania and I, um, I met someone in New York. Uh, he had a, a specialized school program with the kids who had problems in their lives. And I, uh, I was very touched by that. And I asked him, how can I help? He goes, well, you can come in and uh, chip in and just talk to them. Uh, I'm being a mentor, listening to them, tell them because I, we all had struggles in our lives at some point. Uh, it was publicized a few years ago that I uh, struggled with a lot, some issues and I went public. I know by doing so, I help a lot of people. And I had been doing it for 12 years and someone from New York approached me to do the same thing in the Bronx. And I was very scared to be honest. And I, mm -hmm. uh, but my new life, my new thinking is I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna do my best and that's the best I can do. And I start with one school. Go back, in go back to the tattoo. Yes, I have to. Like I, <laughs> that's why I, it's a reminder every time. Like I'm going into an environment which is uh, I'm a French Canadian, a white man, a six foot four man who comes into a room, and you people notice. And I was scared, but when I walked in, I uh, I saw some beautiful kids who who needed some just encouragement and uh, a positive thinking, and I start to listen to them. I don't talk about my life all the time, but I want them to have a voice. And I started with one school and it grew to about 24 schools in the Bronx. So I've been doing it for three years and now I'm, I have my own program. Uh, it's called Make Your Moment program and I, uh, everything it's been on pause for the last uh, few months, but I'm looking forward to go back in the program 
Um, we, there's about 15 kids in the classroom. We do a circle and I want the kids to express themselves and to respect them. And uh, it works, for, it works for, uh, really well and I'm so proud of that program. Oh, that's amazing. Congratulations. We, we do a lot with schools too. Uh, as an office, we interact with schools. We do exchange of teachers. Uh, we look at uh, how they're doing pre-K as we, we want to boost pre-K also in Quebec. And uh, uh, that's amazing work and important work uh, you're doing. So I don't think anybody was really aware. So I'm sure people will enjoy knowing that. Uh, uh, Stefan, thank you. Um, so it's often said that, at least I said it, our best ambassadors. And I really believe that, you know, uh, our artists also are, this is comme le stock, the basis of what we do. It, you've, you've, you've created something emotional, like a very big link between the US and Quebec, and we build on that to do business, to achieve our, our goals as a province. Uh, we're facilitators, uh, in, other, in other words. So to succeed in the NHL, it takes talent, but it takes more than talent. It takes discipline, perseverance, you said it, strong ethic uh, uh, in your work, in your sport. So I'd like to hear from you on what advice you give uh, someone starting their career, younger person who wants to succeed in hockey or in business in the US. Like what's different? Where, where do we as Quebecers, you think, you know, maybe hit a wall and where do we score in the U.S.? Maybe we can start by Guy. Well, first of all, uh, as, a, uh, as a kid, if you want to make a career, you have to be a perseverance and uh, you have to make a lot of sacrifice and uh, train a lot. Uh, I know in my days in the 60s, was different than today because today they play hockey and they train four months a, a year. In my days, uh, we didn't have that opportunity, so uh, it was it was tough. But uh, the main thing is to uh, believe in yourself and uh, make sure that uh, you're uh, targeting on your goals and uh, you you do everything you can to achieve your goal. It doesn't matter if you succeed or not. The main, the, the, the main reason is to at least go for it and try it. If you don't make it, that, that's not important. At least you try, you try hard and you give everything to, to, to achieve your goals. So uh, it doesn't, uh, uh, it's not everybody that uh, has got the opportunity or the luck in, 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 in a way to uh, succeed right away. You know, they might not succeed the first time, but repeating and uh, pursue, I mean, uh, uh, getting really, really concentrated about what they're doing and what they want in life. I think it's important to uh, uh, not letting anything go. Uh, you have to uh, really work hard and make sure that uh, it's set in your mind and that's where you want to go. And you, there's, no, there's nobody who's going to try to put you on the side or whatever. You, you, go, for, you go for the target and... Uh, you aim for the target and you make sure that uh, you, you, you're mentally prepared and uh, physically prepared to, to succeed. Yeah, you, you, you demonstrated that this is important throughout your career. And I was watching the, the television uh, two-part series that you did also, uh, you know, this week. And I could, uh, I could understand how you were extremely disciplined and, you know, you were hardworking. This was your priority. And that's what kept you being, you know, the best and the best. And you know, it's, you know, it's, it's like my, my, when I came back with the Rangers in 1988, 89, uh, when uh, I met the, uh, the, the Phil Esposito, and Phil Esposito was telling me at the time, uh, you know, if it would be me sitting at your place, would you give me this opportunity of making a comeback? I said, for sure, because. Uh, you work hard and uh, you want you, you, you dream about making a comeback that's what you want so uh, but uh, it was uh, I had nothing to lose uh, the team the Rangers had nothing to lose me I had everything to lose because everybody didn't a lot of people is didn't he believe. gonna perform yeah. is he gonna be as good as he was was the question yeah yeah but then you you proved them uh, that you were and you had yeah. this big reputation you know behind you uh, in your career and 
it, it, it's another challenge to come back, I guess, more at the end of your career. But you, I think you, you did the, obviously you did the right thing and uh, it must have been more relaxed and you must have enjoyed it when you, when you left again uh, to retire because, you know. Well, I was, ready, I was ready for retirement at the time, <laughs> 1991. But, uh, you know, any athletes would love to end his career the way he wants it. Yes. So, uh, for me, I was lucky enough to make a comeback. A lot of players are not lucky at all. They, 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 their career is going to end up and they don't have a second chance to come back. And, uh, but me, I was lucky and uh, I really yeah. appreciate when Phil Spuzio from the Rangers gave me that opportunity. Yes, no, I can understand that. And I mean, not every player uh, has won a Stanley Cup. You won many, so that's, that's, <laughs> that's really something. <laughs> We don't live in the past, though. <laughs> yeah, we don't live in the past. That's right. Um, okay, so uh, Stefan, can you tell us a little bit about, you know, what was, what do you think it, it, it takes to make it uh, as a Quebecer, more particularly, uh, in the U.S.? And, and where do we sort of have to work harder, hit a wall, or find adversity? I'm going to add on what Sagi said, but it's, uh, it was right on we're going to come to a time where if you don't believe in yourself and if you don't push yourself, they'll put you aside and they'll crush you. Um, yeah. But I, what I really helped me, I raised my hand. I said, I'm not afraid to ask for help. You were asked the question is like, how can you, how can you go to New York or go, how can you go to the U S and to, to be successful? If you think you're going to be by yourself, it's going to be a little bit harder. Mm -hmm, I think mm -hmm. you can surround, you get a great program, to, uh, to have a group, a select group, who will help each other out. And I think it's, uh, it's not a sign of weakness if you raise your hand and ask for help. And what do you think? And can, I, uh, can you give me some tips in there? So uh, I think it's a good tool to have. Mm -hmm. And I think if you want to be successful in New York, uh, don't go there alone. Go there with a plan. Just like us, we had a plan. We had to train hard and also believe in your... Uh, um, in your talent, but also you can't, as players, we can't just all play, all, we're going to talk about money for two seconds. Mm -hmm. if, you only, if you only play for the money, uh, you lose, the, you lose the, the, the goal that you have in front of you. Uh, you can ask Key and all the NHL players were growing up, if uh, you could play for free in the NHL, would you play? And our, our mind changed in our 20s for sure, but when we were young, we would play. We played hockey because we were passionate. And that's what the scouts, that's what the Montreal Canadiens saw in Mr. Lafleur. That's what the Calgary Flames saw in me, that I saw the passion, but I was really hard-nosed and I was really, I really wanted it so badly. So, uh. Yeah. No, that, that's, that's a very good point. It's all about the passion. It, it, it's, and, you know, what I was hearing you both speak and... Sometimes I think, you know, Quebec is this great big province, you know, with wonderful people, but sometimes we feel smaller than we are, uh, you know, for some reason. Uh, you know, it's like uh, we, we do a lot to sell our clean hydroelectricity in New York. And I mean, we have to see ourselves for what we are. We're a big green province. And, uh, you know, people before us build those, those dams to allow us to have this surplus of clean energy now, it's wonderful. But sometimes we don't see ourselves like we are. So I often, you know, try to, to change the way that we, we approach the Americans because we have talent, we have passion, uh, we have uh, made uh, some uh, very big success in history and we have a lot to offer. So it's a bit the, the state of mind that you were talking about. I, I, uh, I think that's right on. I want to go to... Um, People in the, in the room, if I can say, have questions for you, and uh, time is flying by. So let me go to the question from uh, this time, Anne-Brigitte Sirois. Anne-Brigitte, she's an 80 for 80. She's a great uh, uh, Quebecer, and she's been in New York for a very long time. And she has had a tremendous influence in the development of the Chelsea art, uh, uh, you know, scene in New York. Uh, and she has a question for you. She's asking, in your opinion, Stéphane and Guy, can a Quebec team be recreated in the future? Um, and do you view this as uh, desirable? 
I guess, uh, in New York with the Rangers, the Quebec presence of, uh, oh, a Quebec team, she means the Nordique. That's the Nordique question. <laughs> okay, well, go ahead. <laughs> well, Guy played for the Nordique, so I'll let, I'll let him answer <laughs> first. Well, well, I just hope, I just hope one day that the Nordique's going to be back because uh, the fans really deserve that because they, uh, they supported that team for so many years. Uh, and unfortunately, the team moved to uh, Denver, Colorado. So, uh, and they won the Stanley Cup there. So, uh, yeah. I just hope that uh, one day the NHL will give uh, the fans uh, of Quebec City a franchise. Yeah. So, but, uh, so we can pick up where where we left off. Yeah, with, well, the, with the Nordic. Gotta be tough <laughs> because you you gotta need to do some good draft and uh, to be able to uh, have the same talent as you had when they won the Stanley Cup. <laughs> yes, and it, it I mean even the junior leagues are really good in Quebec City. I lived there for a while, and I mean there's fourteen thousand people for a junior yeah. uh, uh, league. It's a lot of people in the, in the arena. So there's passion for hockey for sure. Uh, how was it, Guy, to, to play for the Nordiques? I have to ask the question. I mean, I, you're, I, you're truly a, a Canadian I, at heart. I loved it, I loved it because, uh, first of all, I, that's where I started my career and that's where I ended my career. So, yeah. so for me, uh, for, for me, uh, I really like to, to end my career there. And uh, also, uh, but when you played for, for, for the Habs, was it weird? Was it strange to play against your, your it was, old team? It was, it was. It was strange to, <laughs> be, to play for the Nordiques against Montreal because when I was sitting on the bench, I was telling myself, that's not my place. I should be sitting on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, when I played for the Nordiques, unfortunately, we didn't win too many games, you know. They had a young team, uh, Sackick, Owen Nolan, uh, Matt Sundin. They had great, great talent, but just it was just a question of time, and uh, I think for the timing for the, the the fans in Quebec City wasn't there because they moved mm -hmm. the franchise. But I loved it. I love to play uh, uh, in Quebec City. Yeah, it's a great town. Um, so uh, quite another question from the from uh, people who are uh, in this webinar. Uh, so Guy and Stefan, you both live extraordinary, amazing moments in your career. If you had to choose the one that makes you the most proud, which one would that be and why? Well, for me, winning the Stanley Cup, I had many, many, uh, uh, winning the Stanley Cup in New York because it was a, uh, that the city needed, uh, hasn't won a Stanley Cup since 1940. The Montreal Canadiens were used to see the, uh, the parade downtown Montreal, but the New York Rangers, uh, uh, they only won one Stanley Cup since 1940 and I'm part of that that group, so I'm very proud of that uh, that achievement. Yeah, no, no, no doubt. And what about you, Guy? Me, the, my most satisfying thing was the uh, well, winning the Stanley Cup for sure, but but the comeback with the Rangers in 1988-89 because it was a great challenge for me, and uh, it was like I was starting all over again. I was I felt like a rookie, and uh, <laughs> so I had to prove myself. So. Uh, to, to make that comeback, so uh, I, I that that moment uh, I would share it for share it for the rest of my life because uh, the organization, the whole organization of the Rangers, uh, was just fantastic to give me that opportunity. Catherine, yeah, can I, and I, can I yes, yes, go ahead. One of the best moment I ever watch on TV is when Guy played his uh, game first game back in Montreal as a New York Rangers. I remember you had one of the longest standing ovation. And I think you managed to score two goals and one assist, I think. Yeah, we, lost <laughs> <the game. laughs> we lost the game. We lost the game. Well, that's uh, well, for us, as, for me as a fan, yeah. and because growing up watching you play, uh, it was so, all of us, we had goosebumps. I have goosebumps just to talk about it. You were skating and knowing you now for years and the, uh, the humble person that you are, you wanted to end it. And I, I I'm sure you wanted to drop the puck, but... The love that you receive from the fans, it didn't matter if you were retired, they just say, they were telling you, thank you very much. And on top of it, at the, you were not young, you were not a young player and scoring two goals against your ex team, that was just for, for us as a fan, it was one of the most memorable uh, hockey game I ever watched on TV. I, I wanted to share that with, uh, with you because it was amazing. Oh, thank you. 
Wow. It was crazy. It was just, uh, <laughs> it was like seven or 10 minutes long and Guy was skinning around and he like, <laughs> you know, it was like, I know, I don't have to relive that way. I know you remember that moment. It was a special moment. Yeah, no, and it must have been as I was thinking before before you said that, you know, uh, Guy, your first U.S. team uh, and then, you know, coming back uh, to the Rangers, it must have been very different the way uh, U.S. people perceive you, welcome you. I mean, you, you had a whole career behind you. So uh, what, was it very different how you, you were perceived and welcomed by the U.S. people? from one generation to the other? Because the people were very, very happy. I remember uh, when we uh, played our first game in the, uh, the, at, the, uh, at the garden, everybody was chanting, uh, gee, gee, gee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay. That's a nice welcome, you know, and uh, I was really, really happy. And uh, it really motivated me, you know, to uh, show uh, to the, the, the fans uh, what I could do on the ice. So it was, uh, was great. It was just fantastic the the way the, the the approach was with the fans. Yeah, no, no doubt. But those are names that that are in the imagination of uh, of New York for sure. And uh, it, it's like that goal, Mato, Mato, Mato. We hear it all the time, right? <laughs> <laughs> so there's another question uh, here. Um, so uh, Greg uh, Quizak, I, I hope I pronounce it uh, the right way. He, he's a, a, a guy who, who studied in Quebec. Uh, he's an 80 for 80 years. And he works at the Madison Square Garden. So we're really proud to have him in our network. And um, he's asking uh, my question to uh, Stefan and, and Guy. I know that you are involved uh, in uh, the Ranger organization and you're involved in giving back. His question is how important it is to give back uh, in your careers uh, somehow. Um, so, whoever wants to start, we, talk, we touched on it a bit earlier. I think it's important. You have to give back, but not every player's personality is to... Some of, some of the players are very shy, even though we live in a public life, very, being, very popular in our city where we play, but not everyone are very comfortable mm -hmm. in, a, uh, in a big group. It's not, it doesn't mean they're stubborn, mm -hmm. it's just something that they're not comfortable in. But uh, I'm not one of them. Um, I like to give back. And I know it takes a lot of guts to go up to an, an adult and to ask for an autograph or a picture. And every yeah. time I go back to Madison Square Garden, I'll, I'll, I always get the uh, hundreds of people that come up to me. And who am I to say no to someone? Mm -hmm. And uh, I've learned that over the years. One of my greatest mentors is uh, Adam Grave, one of the nicest New York Rangers of all time, and they, uh, the Rangers uh, retired his jersey. Just watching him with the fans, and it was it, everything he does, it's with respect, and that's how I want to be respected. So giving back, I think it's important. You don't have to, uh, to do a big dance or whatever. Just be yourself and talk to that person. I think you, you, that, that way you leave a, bit, a much bigger impact on that person. Yeah, I mean, you can change the life of a, of a kid, really. Uh, yeah. You know, depending on where he's he's starting from, when when he meets someone who who is an idol for him or who he sees success and perseverance and courage. But the last, uh, when every time uh, when I retired in 2003, I joined the uh, the Montreal Canadiens uh, road uh, road uh, team, and Mr. Lafleur was the uh, superstar on that team, and I I watched him uh, interact with the young kids. He he would interact with the young kids even more than the adults. And the way that he focused on that person one by one, and that kid always, I, I like to observe people, how they react in crowds. And Mr. Lafleur was a big influence in how uh, you should treat people. And that's why he's one of the most uh, recognized and one of the most beloved person in Quebec, not only because of his talent, it's because the way he treat people in Montreal and around the uh, NHL world. Well, yes, I think kindness is, is, a, is a big word that qualifies uh, Guy Lafleur. Uh, that, that is for sure. And thank you for, for that comment. What about you, Guy? I think it's important to give back because as, a, as an athlete, professional athlete, we received a lot from the fans. You know, uh, uh, the fans uh, were bread and butter. So uh, 
And a lot of times, uh, unfortunately, some guys, they forget about that. But uh, I think it's important that uh, we capitalize on that. And uh, if you have a chance to, uh, to sign autograph or uh, take pictures, uh, because Jean Bidiro Jean told me one day, he said, that day, the day nobody's going to ask you for your autograph or a picture, that's the day you're going to start to worry about. So, well, uh, well, that never happened to him, I'm sure. <laughs> no. But it's, it's important. I think uh, the, the fans, they, they, they do a lot for us as an athlete. Uh, they're, they're, you know, and as an athlete, you want to give something back. Me, all, when, me, when I played, I always wanted to give my best on the ice and show to everybody that, you know, they're, they're here to, uh, to uh, cheer for the Rangers or the Montreal Canadian, but they're there for a reason and uh, it's to to see you on the ice and to see you giving your best, your best. So, uh, there's uh, if you don't give your best, uh, you're not getting nothing. Yeah, and, and that's what's so wonderful about hockey. Uh, I mean, people love their hockey. And we were talking earlier about the game. Uh, you both, you were talking about, you know, playing the Rangers against the Islanders. And that, that I mean, there's so many, so much hockey, hockey power in this region and one of the first thing I did when I was appointed to New York is I took the the subway uh, across the river and I went to see a game of uh, the Islanders against the Canadians I wanted to see the Rangers but they weren't playing right away and uh, I mean the, the the fans are extraordinary this this New Jersey New York region is uh, is full of love for hockey players so it's great to be uh, to be in this region um, I have a, another question, and maybe it, it will be maybe the last question because we took a lot of your uh, of your time already. Uh, what advice? This uh, this comes from uh, someone in in, a, in the team of the office, a colleague of mine. What advice would you give to someone facing adversity? And uh, he adds, "Nous sommes fiers de vous. We are very proud of you." So, so oh, adversity. Catherine, I'm sorry. Uh, what advice would you give uh, to someone facing adversity? I think we all have adversity at some point. And like we talked about it earlier, go for uh, I would say go for it. Try it. Like Mr. Lafayette said it earlier, try it. What's the worst yeah. can happen? You're going to be rejected, and, but then go back and go back. And a lot of great, the greatest stories in our world, it's just like it wasn't achieved on the first try. And I think you should just go for it. And like Mr. Lafleur said, if you can make it in New York, then you can make it for in a lot of places. And I uh, don't be afraid. I think it doesn't matter. New York people can be very uh, uh, scary at times, but they're very. If you even though we have a language barrier, they will they will accept you instantly if you just give your best and you be yourself. Don't mm -hmm. pretend you're somebody else. Just be yourself, and they'll give you the breaks that you need. No, I, I think that's absolutely, absolutely right. I mean, uh, you know, I always, sometimes I say to companies, they're discouraged because they come back from the first meeting and they're like, they want to take our, our pants and our shirt and our coat and they want everything. And sometimes we explain to them, but that's the New York way. They just want everything at the beginning, but then you got to dance with them and start negotiating and break the ice that way. And, uh, and uh, they love Quebecers. They love Quebec art. They love Quebec artists. They love uh, our accent. They love our stories. But you're right. If you, don't, if you don't have enough courage to go and confidence in you, you won't be able to, to access this, this uh, relationship that you can build with them. Um, so back to you, uh, Guy. Uh, what would be your advice to face this adversity? Adversity, it's not in my vocabulary. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> but like Stefan said, you know, you have to believe in yourself and uh, you have to uh, uh, go for it, you know. If you dream about something, don't be afraid. Uh, you know, it's uh, the, only, the, only, the only success that's going to happen, it's, it's going to be because of you uh, as an individual, if you, if you target something that you want. Uh, like Stefan said, you might not get it the first time, but there's the second time, there's a third time. And uh, you, you just can't let it go. You, you have to uh, keep on going and uh, believe uh, that you, you're able to do it. 
So, uh, but yeah, and and I think it, it's a good advice. I see some questions. People are interested in what you think will be helpful. People are referring to the COVID pandemic. You know, I think all your answers to this this question are helping them maybe, you know, uh, feel a little bit better going through the day. It's not easy for anyone right now with the pandemic. They, that's, I think they have to look back and say, what's my, what's my talent and how can I do things differently to achieve my goal and, and, uh, and get to it. So there's a parallel uh, between uh, how you, you went through your hockey career and how we, we, we're going through this pandemic transforming our way of life. Uh, I don't think we... I don't think the good thing about it is I don't think I, Catherine Lubier, would have had a chance to speak with Stéphane Matteau and Guy Lafleur on a screen like that if the pandemic had not happened. I don't think so. So maybe there's a positive. <laughs> so well, there was a, a positive, positive way to look at it. We can't use the COVID to gain weight. Use it uses uh, to use excuses for something else. Well, you just have to, there's a different ways to uh, the COVID get families together. Uh, we surrounded ourselves with the loved ones and we get to uh, park our phones and play uh, games and uh, with our family. And uh, so we can use that as an excuse is not to achieve your goal and uh, prepare yourself for the, when the, when the, the open will be open, open at the door. Yeah. Yeah, when the world will, will reopen again, we hope soon. But that's a good, uh, that's a good point. Uh, effectively, we're all closer together in this uh, pandemic, especially I think a lot of parents with kids have had more opportunity to spend time with them and, uh, you know, because they're schooling at home. Or, so that's, uh, that's certainly a positive. Um, we, we're running out of time. I, I really want to thank you. Merci beaucoup. Uh, to have been part of this on behalf of the, the Quebec government. This is important. Sports is a big part of how we develop a strong relationship over time, over you know, many, many years with the United States. Uh, you're truly ambassadors of Quebec, of Canada, of courage, of perseverance. You both have amazing talent and you, you put it to good, uh, good use, as we say. And congratulations on what you do uh, uh, now after your careers uh, in, uh, in uh, Quebec and in the U.S. Uh, I've had the opportunity of seeing what you did and hearing about it. And uh, we're lucky to, to, to count on your involvement on both sides of the border. So Guy and uh, Stéphane, thank you for having joined us for this 80 for 80 years uh, webinar. Uh, well. Give you the last word. Well, thank you very much. Uh, it's a, an honor and a privilege for, for me to be on today with you guys, and I uh, really appreciate that. So I wish all the best, uh, best of luck, and for, don't forget to target, go to your, go, achieve your goal. Make sure yes. you achieve your goal. Yes, that's a good advice. Thank you, Guy. Stefan. Well, thanks for having me. It was great. It was too fast. Once again, it was just like uh, you never know what was going to happen. But thank you very much for having us. Uh, it's a pleasure. And I, I'll be in New York quite a bit. So I'll get in touch with you guys. If you ever want to go for dinners or breakfast and get a group together, we can even do it live. And I'm looking forward for the future. Thank you very much. Great. Well, we'll take you up on that for sure. Yep. So thanks, everyone. And you can just click the, the, the button, the red button on your screen on your screen and uh, to all the 80s, thank you as well. And finally to Valérie and technical people behind us this morning. And I wish you a great day. Thank you. Vive le hockey. Salut. Bye. <laughs>